Atherton Transmitting Station near Ludlow in England on this fine and sunny day. It's a change, it's not raining. My name's Dave. I'm a transmitter engineer at this uh, site. If you just look round, you can see the satellite dishes behind me from which we obtain all the feeds for the shortwave services that are broadcast from here. Further in the background are the shortwave antenna arrays and the site covers about 320 acres. The site was obtained in 1943 and was built by the BBC as Wufferton Transmitting Station. But they didn't call it that to start with. It was called Overseas Station Extension Number 10, OSE 10, and it was the last one of the Aussies, as they were called, that were built. It kept the name Aussie 10 until about 1960, when it became again Wufferton Transmitting Station. When the station was first built, it was equipped with six RCA 50 kilowatt shortwave transmitters that came across from the States on leased land and were installed in the building. So the, the total power output of the station was about 300 kilowatts, 6 by 50. That situation continued until 1963, when by then the Americans had taken an interest in this site. Actually, they started in 1948 and used four or six of the RCAs as the VOA, the Voice of America Relay Station in the United Kingdom. They carried on like that until 60, 1960 when there was almost going to shut the station. But then the uh, fiasco in Cuba arose and uh, the Voice of America realised they needed more power to get their message to the Soviet Union. So they uh, decided to upgrade Wufferton as their relay station and they had it equipped in 1963 with six 250 kilowatt shortwave transmitters made by Marconi and these were, this was the first site that these transmitters were ever installed and we'll go and look at those in a little while. So that gives you a rough idea by of the progress until about 1963. The Cold War continued and by 1979 President Reagan was in a spending mood and he decided to um, invest more money in the Voice of America so they decided to remove the two remaining RCA 50 kilowatt transmitters that were not in use, they were just down the end of the building. They removed the two of those and installed four 300 kilowatt Marconi automatic type transmitters. And they're still in use today. We'll go and look at those in a little while. And that's how it continued with 10 effective 250 stroke 300 kilowatt transmitters. So the station from 1979 to the year 2005 was pretty well equipped with 10 300 250 kilowatt transmitters and that was the mainstay of the system. Okay so let's now get inside the building and uh, show you what happens in there. I've come to this door a good few times since I arrived here in December 1982 and uh, I've stayed for, that's quite frightening, almost 30 years before finally walking out of the door. But anyway, off we go. First thing to see in here is the Great Circle map. Many of you will be familiar with one of these. From the UK, it's centred on London, and um, you can see that New Zealand is not quite uh, as it would appear on a flat map. And Australia doesn't quite look the same, but Africa is fairly well defined, as is South America and North America. As you see, London's the centre. And we've just popped three bearings on there, just one of the arrays outside. It's a 21 megahertz array we've illustrated. And it just shows you the countries that you can cover on the beams that you can send out from the array. The normal array will be 114 degrees. Uh, but we're able to move it 12 degrees to 102 and 12 degrees to 126. So we can start to cover different countries. You can see the Horn of Africa on 126. And um, you can see as we go down on 114, it goes through Albania and then on to, almost on to Mecca. 102 degrees, popular bearing these days for shortwave broadcasting, is towards Baghdad and uh, Tehran. So um, you can see the, the three slews there. This array that we're talking about was a 21 megahertz array, and it also will slew backwards, it will reverse. Uh, so you can cover different parts of the United States. You have the central part here, Central America's there, and then the mid, mid states and then over to the, the north coast or the west coast, nor, the northwest coast. So a very versatile uh, set of bearings there for that particular shortwave array. I'll just stop and look at these few photographs. 
of Wolferson by, uh, by night on the satellite farm, or by evening sunset, I should say. Then uh, Wolferton in the flood. The actual station is on a is on a flood plain almost, and the water is uh, only ever about 300 millimetres below the surface, and often will appear on the surface. This makes it a great site for shortwave broadcasting. It's Wolferton in flood. Wolferton in the winter. You can see the hoarfrost on the arrays and on the tree, and the RF switch stations there that um, switch the different antennas to the different transmitter outputs. Wolferton in the fog. And the final picture is Wolverton as it was in after 1979 up to about 2005 with the six 250 kilowatt Marconi transmitters towards us and in the rear hall, not terribly well lit there, are the three 300 kilowatt Marconi transmitters. Right, let's go through into the hall which doesn't look the same as that now.